Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Scythe. As you can see the artwork is quite beautiful, but the game can be quite complicated. So let's get right to it. You are going to play until one player puts their last star token up here. Then the game is immediately over and everyone scores points. Each player has six of these star tokens. During the game you place your stars here when you've achieved a particular goal. As soon as someone puts their sixth star here, it ends abruptly and you go to the scoring phase. Let me explain how you score points first. In this game, money is points. One money counts as one point. You'll already have some money left from playing the game and the rest of the money comes from this scoring overview here. Just go row by row. This first one says you get points for how many of your own star tokens you have placed on the board up here. This little heart shaped token keeps track of your popularity. If at the end of the game your popularity is somewhere in this section, you get 3 points for every star. If your popularity token is somewhere in this area when the game is over, you get 4 points per star. And if your little heart token is somewhere in this top section, you get 5 points per star. When you score points, just take money from the supply next to the board. The second row says you get points for how many areas you control on the board. For that you look at the map on the game board. Every space that has something on it in your own player color is controlled by you. As long as there isn't something also there from another player, of course. Each space counts as one point, except this space in the middle. This is the factory and this space counts as three points. Just count all the areas you control and then get points for that. This last row says you get points for every two resources you still have left at the end of the game. All the resources will be on the game board and whatever is in the same space as your player tokens is yours. Count them all up and divide it by 2. Then look here to see how many points you get for that. And the last thing you score points for is this little board under the scoring overview. You choose these boards randomly during the setup so every time you play this game it could be something different. Just check the rulebook for what the board you're using for for your game means and how you it will give you points. So again at the end of the game you score points for how many stars you've placed, how many areas you control, how many resources you still have and for whatever the little board says. Next I'll explain what the achievements are the things that you place your own star tokens on. Each player has 6 stars, but you can see there are more than 6 spaces. So during the game just try to focus on a few goals instead of trying to get them all. But I'll ex still explain what each space means, going from left to right. This first one is for upgrades. You can put your star here if you've completed all your upgrades. During the game, when it's your turn, you can pay to move one little cube on your own player board from the top to the bottom. This means you can do more next time, but also pay less resources for things. I'll get to that later. But if you have placed all your six little cubes on the bottom, you can place your star here immediately. This next one is for mechs. Each player has four of these plastic mech figures in their own player color. As soon as you have placed all four of your mechs 
on the game board, you can put your star on this space. Then, buildings. Each player has four buildings in their own color. As soon as you have placed all four buildings on the game board, you can place your star here. There's this space, that's recruiting. Each player has four of these round tokens on their own player board. As you, soon as you have freed up all of these four spaces, you can place your star here. Moving on to this meeple icon. This is for workers. Each player has eight workers in their own player color. As soon as you have placed all eight workers on the game board, you can place your star on this space. The bird. This is for objective cards. At the start of the game, each player gets two of these cards. You can look, but don't show to the other players. As soon as you have done what this card is asking for, you can reveal it and put your star token here. You got two cards, but the other one goes out of the game. These next two show the same icons as you can see. These are for battle. You don't have to, but in this game you can attack another player on the board. If you win a battle for the first time, you can place your star here. If you win a battle for the second time, you can place your star on the other space here. Almost there. These last two are the easiest ones. You can see this heart. Remember the scoring track for getting points at the end of the game? You've got your own little heart-shaped token there. As soon as you've managed to reach the top, you can place your star here. Same goes for this last one. Each player has this token on the power track. As soon as you have reached the last space, you can place your star here. I won't repeat it, just look at the icons and try to remember what they mean. Then we can move on to what you do when it's your turn. When it's your turn, you move your own little pawn from one action space on your own action board to a different space on your own board. For example, from here to here. And then you can do the action that it shows at the top. Uh, when you're done, you can choose to also do the bonus action that it shows at the bottom of that same space. If you don't want to, or you can't do it, just ignore it. You're even allowed to ignore the top action and go straight for the bottom action. It's up to you. The only thing you have to do is move the pawn to another location on your own action board. I'll explain each action space. I'll start by explaining the actions that you can see in the top half of it. Every player has a different board, so the actions will be in different places, but in the end each player has all of the same four actions on their own board. One of the actions is bolster. If you put your pawn on this space, you have to pay one money, and then you can move your own power token up to two spaces, on the power track. You need to have power for when you battle another player. Or if you don't want power, instead of taking that, you can take a card from the yellow deck. These are also used in battle. The next action is producing. When you put your pawn here, you can produce. First you have to pay the price. Right now I can't see any price, so I don't have to pay anything. But during the game this might free up. At some point you'll see icons here, and those will be the price you have to pay before you can produce. After that, you can choose two areas on the game board where you have at least one worker. And then you can take as many resources as there are workers. 
For example, if I have one worker on a space that shows metal, I can take one metal token from the supply. But I don't keep it with me. It stays on the board with the worker. All the resources stay on the game board. If there were two workers, I could have taken two metal. And remember, you can't produce from two areas. Moving on. This next action space is for moving. If you place your pawn here, you can move two of your own player figures and they can move one space. You don't have to move two figures, but when you do, it's only one step. You can move uh, anything you like. You can move your own plastic leader figure, you can move one of your mechs, or you can move one of your own little workers. A few details about that. When you move, you can bring along the resources. If you leave resources behind, you have lost them. Also, you can't move over water. You either need to have unlocked a special power for that, or build a building for that. And the last detail. If you have a mech on the board, then it can carry an unlimited number of workers and resources inside it. So, if I have my mech on the same space as a worker and one resource, I can move all of those to the next space that only counts as one move for one figure. After that, I could move the worker one space, because it was traveling inside the mech. If you look at your own player board, you can see that if you don't want to move, you can choose to take money from the supply instead. The last action space, this one. If you move your pawn here, you can trade, pay one money to the supply, and then you can take two resources of your choice. And remember, you place them on the board by your own player figures. If you don't want to take resources, you can go up in popularity instead. Those were all the four top actions. Bolster to go up in power. Produce to get resources from two areas you control. Move to walk two of your figures one space. And trade to pay one money for two resources. Now let's go to all those action spaces again, but now I'll explain the actions that are on the bottom half of that space. These are in the same location for each player, but the prices are different. All the way on the left, the bottom action is for upgrading. That means you take taking your little cubes from up here and place them on any space you like down here. On this board it says in red how much oil you have to pay. And then this is what you get for that. An upgrade and maybe some money. Then you can pick up a cube of your choice from up here and place it anywhere you like on the bottom. For example, if I take this cube and place it here, next time I want to upgrade it will cost me less oil. And when I do the bolster action, I get to move my power token up three spaces. Next to that is the deploy action. Pay some metal and then you can place one of your mechs on the game board. You always have to place it with one of your little wooden workers. You can choose which mech you want to put on the board, because whatever special ability is written under the mech on your own player board will be activated. For the rest of the game you can do whatever it says on the space where there used to be a mech. Maybe you can walk over water, maybe you can walk further. 
Just look at what the space says. Anyway, this next bottom action is building. You've got four of these little constructions. When you pay wood, you can take one building of your choice and place it on an area that you control. I'll quickly explain each building. This one and this one don't do anything. But when you build them, it frees up a nice bonus space on that action space. And often buildings uh, is what gives you bonus points for those little boards under the scoring overview. This little mill does do something. Next time you produce, the mill also gives you one resource. You get the resource of where you placed this mill. And the last building is the mine. When you build this, you can move from wherever this is to any other location on the board that shows a mine icon. It's like a tunnel system under the game board and you can use that now. The last bottom row action, here on the right, this is recruiting. When you do this action, you first have to pay food tokens and then you can take one of these discs on the bottom here and remove them. It's up to you which one you want to remove. I'll take this one. This disc then goes up here on my character board. It can go on one of these spaces and I get whatever bonus that space says. But I've now freed up this space here at the upgrading action. That means from now on, whenever I do the upgrade action, I get this bonus. And not only me, I also get this bonus whenever the player to my left and the player to my right do their upgrade action. Those were all the actions you can do. According to the rulebook, whenever someone does a bottom row action, the next player can already start her or his turn. This saves a bit of time. Anyway, already a lot of information, but there's more. There are two important points you must know to play this game. The first one is about how you battle. How do you fight in this game? As I've said, you don't have to fight, but if you do, here's how it goes. A fight happens as soon as one player's plastic figure moves into a space with another player's plastic figure. So the wooden workers don't fight, only the mechs and the leader figure. You can also move more than one plastic figure onto another player's space if you want. Also, when you're just passing through, you have to stop and fight. So, now there is a battle. What do you do? You and the other player both take one of these boards, the dials. As you can see, they go from 0 to 7. This is how much power you can choose to spend. Whoever has the most power during this battle wins the fight. But a step back. So, you already have your dial. You can look at where your own power token is on the power track. That is how much power you can spend. If you aren't on space 7 yet, you can't spend 7 power, of course. So you secretly turn the dial to a number you want to spend. If you win or lose after the battle, you lose that much power. You'll go down on the power track. I'll choose 4 power, so I turn it with the number 4 up here. But I can do more. You also have these yellow cards. If you have any of these, you can use them now. If you have one of your figures in the fight, you can, ha you can use one card. If you have two figures in the fight, you can use two cards, and so on. 
On these yellow cards, you can also see a number. This is extra fight power. If you want to use this power, place the card faced up like this. If you only want to bluff, place the card face down. In that case, you can keep the card when the battle is over. For now, I'll place my card up so I can use the power. When both players are ready, you reveal the dials. Whoever has the most power wins the fight. The winner stays where they are and owns any left behind resources. The loser has to take everything back to home base. If you chased away any little wooden workers, you lose that much popularity. If the player who lost the fight used at least one power, that player can take a new yellow card from the deck. This is how a battle goes. And the last important detail is about the factory, the space that's in the middle of the game board. When you go here with your leader figure, the plastic mini that is your character, then you can take all of these purple cards. You can look at all of them and keep one. The rest goes back to their space on the board. This card is an action. You can place it next to your own board and also go to this action space when it's your turn. This is an extra action to choose from. Done! If you've heard enough, thank you for watching the video this far. If you have room for one last detail, here it comes. You can also see these green tokens on the board. Whenever your leader figure stops in a space where there is a green token, you remove the token and take a green card. Each green card shows three bonuses and you can choose one of them. That's it. Well, that was a lot, but I hope it gave you a good impression of how to play Scythe. The first time you play it, you'll be focused on your own actions a lot, but in time you'll keep a better eye on the other players as well. And if you play it, I hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video, feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.